In our ongoing work on the Gospel of Matthew, we are now at chapter 7, and we are going to look at verses 7 to 12. I am going to be reading from the Williams translation. Keep on asking, and the gift will be given you. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who keeps on asking receives, and everyone who keeps on seeking finds. And to the one who keeps on knocking, the door will be opened. What human father among you, when he asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a snake? So if you, in spite of your being bad, know how to give your children what is good, how much more surely will your heavenly Father give what is good to those who keep on asking him? Then you must practice dealing with others as you would like for them to deal with you. For this is the summing up of the law and of the prophets. A fundamental question that we as Christians must address is what is the role of prayer in the life of a believer? A surface reading on the first part of the passage tells us here is that we are to see prayer as an act of besieging God with requests, knowing that he will answer them. Is prayer like an artillery barrage in war? If you attack with the biggest, baddest weapons for a good long time, your enemy will capitulate? In a way, this passage exposes how we are blind to the actual meaning of texts at times. If you come into this passage with the idea that prayer is about asking, knowing that it is a way to get what you want, then you will read the passage one way. The reality is that all Christians fall into the trap with certain passages of doing this, that is, reading into it what we want. None of us are ever in a position where we can truly read the scripture objectively. This is why we need to read passages in scripture in the context of other scriptures. In Romans chapter 1 and verse 17, Paul sets out his theme for the book of Romans. He takes a quotation from Habakkuk in the Old Testament, chapter 2 and verse 4. Paul says that the person who is right before God is the one who lives by faith. Faith is where we accept and believe who God is, and then by faith live our life off that premise. The faith experience is rooted and grounded in the idea that in the discovery of who God is, my life is made great. You see, the center of what it means to be a Christian is found in the person who wants God above all all else, and lives his or her life in light of that truth. You see, when we do this, we honor God, and this is what makes us right before him. So the center of faith is always him, and any claim that makes me the center of the faith experience is to be rejected. Now, let me put the first and second paragraph together. What Jesus is saying in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 to 11, is true. What, in, what is not clear in the text is the precondition, as it were. The precondition is that when you live with God as the most important part of your life, your life is about seeking his will. So when you go to prayer, you're not about seeking things that will impinge your relationship. When you go to prayer, you are not going to be asking things that are going to elevate who and what you are. You know that at times God will bless you beyond and above what you can expect. Prayer is the means by which we align our will with his. Now, we have been talking the ideal. A lifetime of Christian life and living will not make us masters at this. But in and through prayer, we will make great strides in this. Verse 12, in a way, does not seem to fit into the whole passage. It is a bit jarring at first, but then scratch below the surface, and you begin to see the underlying logic. 
The life of a Christian is a call not just to know that God is good. That would make the faith the worship of an abstract ideal. The life of a Christian is to experience the goodness of God, which we can only do as we live in pursuit of him and in surrender to his will. If we do not come to the, that point, then God is a demanding master. When we have learned to live life in his goodness and mercy, well, our life is filled to the overflowing. Verse 12 is about bucket theology. What happens when you keep pouring water in a bucket? It will eventually overflow. When that is happening, verse 12 is saying, you will in turn bless others. You see, she who is, truly lives in the goodness of God and experiences that day after day will be a sloshing bucket, and then those around her will be impacted by her life.